Hey guys, it's Yoshi Shiraku with Utah Home Sweet Home, and I am super excited because today I've got a professional two-time World Cup, uh, MLS Cup athlete, sorry, two-time professional athlete, MLS Cup, Nat Borchers, uh, here with me today. Nat is not only a professional athlete, professional soccer player, but he also happens to be a friend of mine, Nat. If you don't mind sharing with the audience and the viewers uh, a little bit about your soccer career. Yeah, well, I, I wish, Yoshi, that I was a two-time World Cup champion. I don't, I don't know where I would be now if that was the case, but uh, I appreciate you having me on here. And, yeah, I've been uh, – I played professional soccer for 14 years. And I – during that point in time, I actually lived in Utah for – about seven of those 14 years, and that's how I got to know you, and we did some business together, which was awesome. Thank you. And now and I'm, uh, I'm retired from the game now doing, doing real estate. Awesome. Excellent. And you won both of those cups, uh, well, I should say those two cups, one with Utah and one with Portland, correct? Yeah, one with Real Salt Lake and one with Portland. Two, two very wonderful memories and fantastic teams. Awesome. Awesome. Now, you played uh, abroad as well, correct? Yes. So I, I got to enjoy uh, two wonderful years in Norway. And so I got to play with a team out there called Odd Grenland. So that was in the middle of nowhere, Norway. And I actually owned rental property there, which was fun. And wow. I didn't that's a, that. a little side note. Yeah. And um, man, I was there for two years and um, you know, very fun to live there, be in a different culture and get to come back to the U.S. with a different perspective on, on things. Very cool. Well, excellent. Well, Nat, well, thank you for joining me for this real estate interview. So um, uh, I want people to kind of get to know a little bit about your investing career. How long have you been investing? So that's a great question. So I started investing in residential real estate in 2005. I bought my first property. This is in Denver, Colorado. And I bought it with my best friend. We ended up buying like this estate sale. The house was just totally beat up. We got it for a really cheap price. Uh, we ended up doing all the rehab ourselves. So we like, we painted it. Uh, we put all the tile work in there. Um, you know, we even did some electrical work and uh, some plumbing stuff. And we just got down and dirty in it. And that was my first experience with it. And I, I fell in love with it and we ended up having a, a really good experience. We rented the property for the next, uh, you know, six, seven years before we sold it and we made a profit and I was like, man, this is, this is fantastic. This is a, an awesome way to, to have build wealth. Very cool. Very cool. So that was in Denver. Uh, you've done Norway. Where else do you own or have invested in? Yeah. So I came back from Norway and I came to Salt Lake City and this was like 2008. And 2008 is like the scary word if you're a real estate investor because that's when everything kind of went down uh, right. with the economy and the Great Recession. And it was, you know, there was blood in the streets, right? So, um, you know, I ended up, you know, buying a condo in 2008 um, that left me with a nice big financial scar on my back. Um, so I, I learned a lot about the real estate investing game uh, from then on. And, and actually, even though I had a difficult experience with that condo, I ended up continuing to buy property uh, in Utah, and then I built up a portfolio there uh, until I moved to, to. I got traded from Salt Lake to Portland, and then you know I decided, hey, I want, I'm a hands-on investor, so I want to you know invest locally. So now I'm investing here. That is awesome. What uh, what kind of investments do you typically look for? Like, what are your favorite invest type of investments? You know. Uh, Residential real estate, so anything one to four units. Right now, I'm on this duplex crack thing. I really like duplexes, and so I've been buying a lot of duplexes. And the reason being um, is when you buy a duplex, uh, generally uh, one or both sides is rented out when you buy them. So you're walking right into cash flow, meaning if you were going to buy a single family property, Generally, it's vacant. You have to rehab it. You don't have any cash flow, but you've already got tenants in there. They're paying, um, you know, your mortgage for you. 
Um, and sometimes you're even making money while you rehab one of the units. So uh, I've been really liking those. The numbers are really attractive in this market uh, for those types of investments. Very cool. And those are uh, those are over there in Portland. Are you still investing in Salt Lake just out of curiosity? Uh, so I'm actually in Salem, Oregon here, which is about 45 minutes south of Portland, capital okay. um, um, of Oregon. And very um, a side note about Salem, John Heater, who was the main actor in Napoleon Dynamite, is from Salem. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes, he is from Salem. So when you think about Salem, hey, man, like Napoleon <laughs> Dynamite, um, there's actually a lot of there's like a ton of vineyards and wineries here, a big agricultural town, um, and just seeing a ton of growth because everybody from Portland who can't afford Portland is moving to Salem because it's like half the cost in terms of both housing, uh, you know, rents, and in terms of like, you know, value, the pricing of these homes. Got it. Okay, very cool. You know, I, I just noticed, I just assumed because it was red, it was a real Salt Lake Jersey. But I noticed there's a Denver jersey and a Portland jersey, but a Real Salt Lake jersey seems to be missing on that wall. I need to get one framed, Yoshi. That's the problem. I don't have one framed right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Um, excellent. Well, Matt, do you have any tips for, let's say, anybody who's looking to you know, start investing, whether uh, uh, you know they want to get their feet wet with a flip or possibly a, a, a rental property? Do you have – you any tips for somebody who's watching this? Sure. Well, I think the hardest part when you're beginning in real estate is just taking that first step. And I think that the, the safest first step, at least in my opinion, is a buy and hold property. So you're buying a rental property, you're doing uh, a little bit of rehab work, and you're getting it clean and safe for you know renting it you know three to five years to 10 years, right? And you know, that model, I think, is safe because a lot of things can happen in the market. Uh, you know, it can go up, it can go down. Um, so if you need to sell, um, you know, quickly, generally, the flipping business can be tough because if you need to sell quickly, the market just tanked, okay, you may lose money. But the buy and hold method, you're holding for a long period of time. And, you know, these little incremental uh, increases in price and value are happening uh, and you're paying down your mortgage at the same time. So I'm a big fan of that model. That's what I do. So I think for anybody trying to get into the game, focus on that model and focus specifically on entry level housing. And what is entry level housing? People are probably going to want to know. Well, it is housing that is affordable to you know, the majority of people you know, in your town or in your city. Uh, so, for example, the properties that I'm buying are properties that people uh, who are in incomes you know, between fifty and seventy thousand dollars can afford. Right. So we're talking about houses in the one hundred fifty to two hundred thousand dollar range um, where, you know, people can qualify with FHA loans, which is like three percent down um, or don't bring need to bring a ton of money uh, to close in terms of their down payment. Uh, and I just think it's like it's like a product, right? Like like anything, you know, you can buy off the shelf. You know, it's it's something that can be you know readily bought and sold versus like the mansion or the you know, more uh, the nicer property, the, the property that's in, you know, the nicest part of town. You know, it, it's just something that it's really easy to get in and get out of. Got it. Got it. Very cool. Speaking of flipping being difficult, uh, there was a flip that you were doing right when you got traded from Salt Lake to Portland that somebody kind of stepped in and helped you get that property fixed up and sold. That guy was amazing, wasn't he? Man, what, what was his name? I can't remember. Um, yes, I, I do remember that quite well, Yoshi. So uh, you actually came in and helped me out with that project. So I got traded uh, from Salt Lake to Portland at the end of 2000, I want to say 15, no, 14. And I was in a bit of a bind with this flip. And you were able to come in and act as a contractor for me and actually list the property for me. And I'll tell you what, that saved me a ton of time, headaches, and you did a great job. I mean, the, the house popped. We got uh, asking price for the property. And, you know, that's what, you know, I, I look at real, uh, real estate and it's a relationship business. And so I like doing business with my friends like you uh, who are re reliable and who are going to help me get the most bang for my buck. So thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you for the kind words, Nat. I really appreciate it. 
<laughs> well, excellent. So let me ask you now, now that you're in Portland, are you uh, looking you know, for, for other partners to invest in multiple deals with in the future? Yeah, so you know, as a real estate investor, you have a, a finite amount of capital usually, right? Because you just need uh, cash in order to buy these properties, you need cash to uh, rehab these properties, and, and everybody's got a certain amount of, of capital available. So in looking at this business, I, I realized uh, you know, last year actually that I needed to grow and scale. I needed to bring partners in to help me do that. Uh, so anybody looking for a safe and consistent return, I'm always looking uh, for people to work with in that regard. And I don't like to work with everybody because not everybody is you know, fun to work with and not everybody has realistic expectations, but always looking for uh, anybody who wants to you know, bring their money into a deal and get that safe and consistent return um, and also be a part of something special. So I, the way I look at my business is I'm making you know, neighborhoods in, and uh, communities in, in Salem where I invest better. Uh, because I'm buying properties that are sometimes distressed and and aren't being well taken care of, and I'm investing in these properties, and I'm being bringing in tenants who are qualified and you know who will take care of the property, and you know I even pay a landscaper to to go and and maintain those properties uh, to go by there every two weeks, cut the lawn, cut the shrubs, because I want the neighborhood to say, hey, you know these are one of Nat's properties, and he cares about them. He wants our values to to be good as well. Very cool. Now, how do you, how do people who are interested in potentially seeing if you guys are a good fit and being partners contact you? Great question. So, uh, very very simple. This is my my personal email address. It's beard at natborchers.com. So you can reach me there. Uh, just send me send me an email. Let me know what's up. Uh, would love to uh, see what your interests are in real estate, and always looking to help people out who want to progress in the real estate game. Very cool. Very cool. I like that email address. Well, <laughs> Matt, uh, I, I ask everybody I interview this question because I'm always fascinated of the real estate investor life. Uh, you know, it's not a nine to five, and that's why I love it so much. And so, as a as a last question to wrap up this interview, what does the average day of Nat Borchers look like? Well, I, that's an excellent question, Yoshi, because I think you hit the nail on the head. It, it is not nine to five, and I think that the reason I love this business so much is that I get to set my own schedule and nobody's telling me you know, what to do with my time. And it's, it's awesome because I can be in the office getting work done or I can be outside the office working on projects. So I'm not like in this little cubicle, you know, getting yelled at by some boss, you know, I'm like, I am my own boss. And uh, the typical day, uh, you know, for me, you know, is, is very, is very structured in terms of you know, I, I get up, I work out, I'm really big into fitness, but then, you know, I'm hitting the ground running, uh, communicating with my contractors, communicating with my real estate broker, um, having lunch with um, investors and partners, um, making sure that all our projects are working and flowing smoothly, and then um, really working with sellers too, because that's you know the big part of my business is working with people who want to sell their properties, sometimes directly to me. Uh, we don't use a real estate agent sometimes, uh, and so that's a big part of it too. So you know, those happen at all hours of the day, but hey. I can take a two-hour lunch if I want. You know, I can take a day off and be with my family if I want. Um, and that's the, the fun part about all this. You have to put your time in, but it's whenever you want to do it. Very cool. Very cool. I guess I have one last question. That, that was going to be the last one. I thought of another one. Uh, okay. I actually have stumbled upon a lead that's a 20-plex in Sandy that I'm looking at. Any interest in potentially partnering on a deal back in Utah again? 20 plex in Sandy, absolutely. I would love to take a look at those numbers, Yoshi. I'm actually getting to the point in time where I'm moving into 1031 exchanges okay. with my properties. And so I'm doing my first one here uh, with the property I've owned now for about three years. Uh, we've seen some pretty significant gain in equity and value. So I'm going to take that equity and then reposition it into a property out here. Um, and so, you know, I've got other properties that. You know, tick those boxes. So I would definitely be interested in looking at that opportunity with you. Okay, excellent. Well, I'll keep you posted as I get more information on it. I just got a tip off from a friend of mine uh, on this 20 plex that maybe uh, the seller is looking to sell pretty soon here. So uh, awesome. let me know and I'll keep you posted. Sounds great, man. I appreciate that.
Yeah, yeah, excellent. Well, Matt, thank you so much for joining me today on this interview, uh, giving the viewers a look at what a professional athlete, real estate investor life looks like. I really appreciate you taking the time. Absolutely a pleasure, Yoshi. Anything for you, my man. Thank you. Uh, thank you. All right, well, take it easy, buddy. Thanks so much. All right, buddy, thanks. Thank you.